Alright guys, I'm back with my review of WWE Monday Night Raw for March 10th, 2014. And you got Hulk Hogan coming out. He talks about his match with Andre the Giant, how he pressed him over his head, which did not happen. And he says he wants to do the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania. So you're going to have 30 wrestlers in a Battle Royal at WrestleMania, and the winner gets a gold Andre the Giant trophy. Now, I have no idea who they're going to put in this match. It seems like a way to just cram every single person possible into a match at WrestleMania. You're probably going to have Tensai out there, Brodus Clay, Xavier Woods, guys like that. Um, the only people I could see winning this are Roman Reigns, Big E, and Cesaro. Maybe Dolph Ziggler. Actually, you know what? No, not Dolph Ziggler. But Big E, Roman Reigns, and Cesaro. But I was really hoping that they would do Cesaro versus Jack Swagger at WrestleMania, and hopefully they still do that, but WrestleMania, you got four hours to kill, so why not, right? So John Cena comes out, he says he wants to be the first person to enter his name into the Battle Royal, and the Wyatt family comes out. And Bray Wyatt says that pride is the downfall of man, and if you look at him directly in the eyes, you see a god, and Cena says, how can you say pride is the downfall, then call yourself a god, which was a good point. But then Cena completely buries Bray Wyatt here. He says he's been wasting away in Margaritaville, and he got his rocking chair from Cracker Barrel. Now, this was very funny, which is exactly why it buried Bray Wyatt. It was good stuff. Cena had a lot of firepower here with his insults, and Bray Wyatt had nothing. He just stared back at him. So I really didn't care for that. Um, it was entertaining, but to build Bray Wyatt up, I mean, yeah, you're going to mock the guy. You're going to have Cena make fun of him. And there is stuff to make fun of, but you want to take him seriously at the same time. I mean, I don't know. What do you do in that situation, really? For me personally, if I was running the company, I just wouldn't do that. <laughs> I would say, yeah, there's a lot of goofy stuff. You can make fun of the way he comes out and blows out an LED light bulb, too. But why the hell would you focus on that? You want people to ignore that part of it. Um, so anyways, this leads to Eric Rowan versus John Cena, which was not good, and Cena beats him with a weak-ass roll-up. The Usos face Rybaxel in another boring match. Uh, the Usos hit the splash on Curtis Axel, I think, for the win. Then backstage, Kane is talking to The Shield, and he says he wants them to prove that they're still a valuable asset. So the cracks started appearing when they lost the tag titles against the Rhodes Brothers. So he puts them in a match, Reigns and Rollins against the Rhodes Brothers tonight. And then it's Jack Swagger versus Biggie Langston. And Swagger's doing pretty good, but then he tries to get Cesaro to interfere in the match and take a cheap shot at Big E. And when he refuses, Swagger is yelling at him. He gets distracted. Big E rolls him up for the win. The Undertaker comes out. He does his entrance, which is what people pay to see from The Undertaker these days. And Heyman comes out and puts over the streak, says Brock Lesnar is going to end it. Undertaker says, tell Brock he will rest in peace. That was it, and it was fine. That's all you need with these two guys. You don't need anything fancy. Um, then it's the Rhodes Brothers versus Rollins and Reigns. This was a good match here. I love their matches together. Rollins hits a buckle bomb on Cody Rhodes and then hits the stomp to the head for the win and it kicks so much ass to see the shield working as a united group again they don't have all this oh you know I'm gonna throw you over the top rope I'm the best none of that anymore they're just working together and it's really cool to see again then it's Nikki Bella or uh, the Bella twins versus AJ and Tamina the best part about this was Natalia on commentary saying enough is enough and it's time for a change which reminded me of Owen Hart. Nikki hits the torture rack backbreaker on AJ for the win, and that was pretty much it. The match itself, I mean, who cares? It's it's terrible, and after watching SmackDown, it's clear that they're just putting over John Cena's girlfriend. So who gives a shit? So it's time for the Occupy Raw segment. Daniel Bryan comes out, says he's going to stay in the ring until he gets what he wants from Triple H. And he fills the ring with all of these people wearing Yes t-shirts and chanting Yes. And, I mean, it's a ton of people. I've never seen anything like this before. It was awesome. And he refuses to leave, so Triple H comes out with Stephanie and says, Look, you guys got 30 seconds. I'm sending security. 
So security comes down to the ring and they're like, we can't do anything here, there's too many people. So they go back, Triple H is like, all right, I'm sending out the next wrestler, get out of my ring, we're starting the next match. And Damian Sandow comes out and he has to leave. He's like, I can't do anything either. So Daniel Bryan tells Triple H that he wants him at WrestleMania. And Triple H is furious now, so he accepts the match. And then Daniel Bryan says, but I also want to be in the world title match. So if I defeat you, I get entered into the triple threat match. It's going to be Batista Orton and myself for the WWE world title. And Triple H is just going ballistic, so he agrees to this as well. Now, there is no reason they would do all of this if they don't plan on putting Daniel Bryan in the triple threat match, right? I'm hoping. Uh, so... <laughs> That's what I hope they're doing. I mean, I guess maybe they're doing this so people buy WrestleMania and they still fuck Daniel Bryan over, but come on. They wouldn't possibly do something like that. I hope. Um, but if this is the way they're going to do this, they have Daniel Bryan beat Triple H and then become the champion at WrestleMania, that is going to be legendary. That's going to put him over huge and definitely make him a star, a bigger star than he already is. So this was so awesome. Very happy for Daniel Bryan. And this should be his moment, WrestleMania 30. So I'm very excited about this. It's Christian versus Sheamus in a Memphis street fight. And normally WWE does this one of two ways. They make a big joke out of it, like they did with Damian Sandow, or they have two guys go out there and put on a good match. And this was a good match. I really enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun. They had some electric guitars, acoustic guitars, a drum set. But these two guys caned the shit out of each other, and the finish was Sheamus. Bro kicks a bass drum Christian is holding through the drum, hits Christian in the face, and gets the win. But awesome match here. Um, what happens next? We see Brad Maddox backstage talking to Randy Orton and Batista. He says you guys need to be on the same page to take out the big show and Daniel Bryan. Alexander Rusev comes out. I will not mention this guy again until he does something new. It's pointless. Then Bray Wyatt cuts another promo on John Cena. So the main event is Orton and Batista versus Bryan and Big Show. And this match was okay. Wasn't anything great by any means, but it was at least watchable, unlike the other Batista matches so far. And the finish is Batista accidentally spears Orton. Bryan hits the flying knee on Batista, and then the knee on Orton for the win. So overall, I thought this week's show was pretty average. You had the Undertaker stuff, which is fine for what it is, but it's always better when both guys who are going to be in the match are there, and it was kind of like Undertaker versus Heyman here, but you know they have way more stuff planned with Lesnar versus Undertaker coming up. Um, you had some good matches this week, Christian versus Sheamus, The Shield versus The Rhodes Brothers, the awesome Occupy Raw segment, which I've never seen before. That's definitely going to be a huge moment in Raw history. And then you had some stuff that was really just kind of generic and bland, like the Usos versus Ry Baxel, that crappy John Cena versus Eric Rowan match, and the main event, which looked like something you would see on SmackDown, honestly. So that's my review. Hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts in the show in the comments, and thanks for watching.